Hi, this is Todd Dwyer on the Regeneration Road Trip. Um, I write for Regeneration.org. Behind the camera is Sarah Van Shagen. She writes for Grist.org. We're here at our last stop and uh, at Verdon Power on Roosevelt Island. Um, talking to Jonathan Colby with Verdon Power. And um, so what do you guys got going on here? You are in the control room of the North America's first tidal energy project. We are working to convert the current of the East River into electricity. We have two turbines operating right now in the East River, generating a rated 35 kilowatts every tide. What is the history of this project here on Roosevelt Island? What else have you guys done? Yep. Um, this is the third deployment of turbines here on the Roosevelt Island Tidal Energy Site, or the right site. The first deployment was in December of 2006, and we put in two units, which had the original uh, fiberglass skin and steel skeleton blades on it. Uh, we had blade failure issues with those two turbines, so we came back for a second deployment where we put in six turbines, all with a newly designed aluminum magnesium solid metal blade design. Those operated for about two to three months before they had their own issues with some of the bolts. Those issues were addressed, and we're now in a third generation of turbines using a similar aluminum magnesium composite blade with a new mounting system to keep the rotor attached and prevent the failure that we saw before. Altogether, we have something like 8,000 operational hours of turbines with a total energy generated of about 60 megawatt hours. So put that in perspective for me. Yeah, there's a couple ways. The easiest probably is that a large hospital uses about one megawatt every hour. So a large hospital uses about a megawatt hour each hour. So for this deployment alone, we generated 11 megawatt hours. So we've run a large hospital for about 11 hours. If you look at our cumulative energy generation, we're at close to 60 megawatt hours. So we've run a large hospital for about three days. So this has been a sort of learn as you go sort of thing, very much like an experimental. Absolutely. How long until we're going to see these all over the rivers in our country? Absolutely. This is the very final deployment of the pilot phase here on Roosevelt Island. The results from this phase will be used exclusively in the federal license, which will allow us to sell power on the grid just as Keyspan or Con Ed would. We hope to submit that federal license by the end of the calendar year 2009 and begin deploying commercial turbines in 2010. That would be the first commercial build out of a tidal system in North America. And once we have our federal energy permit to sell power, then we can start to expand beyond New York City basically immediately. Well, so the tides don't stop. How much conceivably, let's say in 10 years, if everything goes as planned, will, can, could our country's power come from the waves and tides? There are basic kind of preliminary results and studies that suggest that up to 10% of all the United States energy could come from existing bodies of naturally moving water, not including any dams or anything like that. Just using the tides and waves, you get between 10 and 15% of all of America's energy from this source. And what effect does uh, this particular project have on the wild, local wildlife? It's the, the impact of these turbines on the ecosystem has been a major concern for many of the regulatory agencies and many of the local kind of residents. The largest impact, which is unavoidable, is the fact that there are rotating blades that are heavy in the water. So immediately there's a concern of impact with fish, both physical striking of fish and of generally changing the ecosystem as a result of those the wake behind those blades. Um, there's also diving birds out here in, in the East River, so we have concerns with birds that are diving through the turbine field. Uh, we <clears throat> study the fish population extensively using underwater fish monitoring technology, and thus far we have not seen any really negative effects of these turbines operating in, in the ecosystem you know, how those two relate to each other. So you guys have been monitoring it pretty much 24-7 <laughs> this whole time. Absolutely. Even since before the turbines hit the water, because we had to have a baseline case of what it looked like without turbines. So at this point, we've been monitoring wildlife in the East River since 2005 in various forms, and the 24-7 monitoring started in the middle of 2006. And how, is, how has this project been received by, the, by New Yorkers and the local community? <laughs> I would say the vast majority of people absolutely love what we're doing. 
we get tons of people who stop by to just see what's going on, to learn more about it, to tell us what a great job we think we're doing. We have had people such as fishermen, kayakers, recreational boaters, and then commercial boaters who have definitely expressed concerns over the limited accessibility of the water and what that might do to the kind of recreational uses of the river. And we're working with those, you know, stakeholders to make sure that everyone's concerns are addressed. Why did you pick this particular site? Yeah, New York is a good site. The east channel of the East River has really good velocities. The water moves very rapidly, and it's a very straight and well-defined channel. So you don't have a lot of turbulence, and you don't have a lot of flow moving in a bunch of different directions. <coughs> Second, the East Channel is way less navigated than the West Channel. All the main boat traffic in New York goes up and down the West Channel of this river, so it makes this side quieter, easier for closing off portion of it where our turbines are. And then finally, we really wanted to prove that we could operate within the bureaucratic environment of New York City. We really thought it would bolster our case as a company to survive and thrive in a regulatory environment such as New York City, as opposed to picking some place that might have been a little easier to do an initial project. Was that difficult? Yeah, it turned out to be extremely difficult. We um, are dealing with a number of state and federal agencies, all of whom need to be satisfied before we can get the seals of approvals and the permits and whatnot. So yeah, it has absolutely you know, shown to be very challenging. But we have a very good rapport with the local New York State regulators and they're really starting to trust and kind of get behind the work we're doing. And they're really realizing that some of the major catastrophic fears they had were slightly unwarranted. And we've now moved on to some of the more subtle, kind of smaller scale dynamic effects of turbines on the ecosystem, which is good because we basically moved into the real questions and the real issues instead of the big red flag waving kind of overkill questions.